Good morning students. This is Dr. Sirisha, Associate Professor from CRC Department, MLRIT. So, so far we have discussed about XML, just introduction of XML and how it is different from HTML. Both are markup languages only, but coming to XML, this is an extensible markup language. And uh, we have seen how we have to write an XML code and all in our last session. In this session, I just want to uh, give you a summary on how to define the elements, its attributes and how these elements and attributes will differ. Okay. So, XML tree structure. You know, every XML will have a root tag and uh, this root tag will have uh, one child tag not only one sub child tags okay number of child tags and also sub child tags so this root tag is nothing but element child is an element sub child is an element whatever you are writing in between the angular brackets is an element you know in html we have written html and also we have written p tags, h1 tags. So, these are all nothing but the tags, elements. But in XML, if you see, we will have the elements which are user defined that we know already, right? So, XML documents are formed as elemented trees. Here, tree means this is a root tag, this is a parent tag. Under that, you will have a child tag. Under that, you will have a sub child tag. So, XML tree starts with a root element and branches from the root to child element. So, this is how the tree will go through, right? Then, XML uses much self-describing syntax. That means what? Whatever the tags you are writing, that is also extensible, means extending. Whatever you are writing, that will give you some information. Okay, so a prolog defines the XML version and the character. Prolog is nothing but we start our XML code with this line, which is a prolog. You start with a question mark and also you end with a question mark. Then XML version equal to 1.0 encoding UTF-8. So for every code, for every XML code, you give this line. So XML, it's version. So version should be 1.0 and encoding you have to give. Encoding should be given as UTF-8. This is the value. So, here if you see, this is an element. This is version is an attribute. Encoding is an attribute. So, next one is root element of the document. We have seen a tree in the last session. Bookstore uh, tree structure. In that, bookstore is a root element. So, book is an element. Okay. So, book category, if you have this line, so in this book is an element, this is an element and this is the attribute and this is the value. Okay, you are right, this is a book which is of category, cooking category. That is the information you are giving with this statement. This is how we write a XML code along with this delimiter or the prolog statement. So, the element have four child. So, title, book element, uh, if you see in the last session, the tree that we have discussed, elements like title, author, year, price we have given. So, these are all child tags and on the top of book. So, uh, in, inside the book, you will have all these four elements. Then, for title, if you see, we have language, which is an attribute. And en, that is, a, if it is in English, it is a value. Okay. Then, author, it's an element, closing tag. Year, closing tag. Price, closing tag. What are these in between? These are also the values of the element that you are giving. They are not the values of your attributes, values of your elements. Next line ends with the book element. So, after all these child tags, you have started your book here. So, book has to be closed at the end. So, this is how we call the as a name naming rules. What are naming rules is wherever you are starting your tag, so, it has to be ended after closing all your sub-childs only. That is a child tag. 
okay so here you are starting title tag if you close your title here this is wrong this is beyond your naming rule so there are some rules to be followed by the xml that means what whatever the tag you are starting that has to be ended wherever it is given okay so what are the syntax rules of the xml so syntax rule, rules are very simple and logical they have root element they have one root element followed by uh, that is a parent of all the other elements so we have seen this already so if you take this example this is a prolog statement this is root this is child this is child or you can say uh, child tag only this is also a child tag these are all child tags if you take this as a child tag on the top of this if you have any other uh, tag then this will become root this will become child these are all sub child tags this is how we write a xml code all xml elements must have a closing tag yes obviously in html also we have seen every html element is having a closing tag in the same way xml also so some elements might work well even with a missing closing tag that's okay sometimes it will work like p tag br tag they don't uh, need to uh, have this closing tag if without the closing tag also it will work in xml it is illegal to omit the closing tag all elements must have the closing tag they have to be written okay in the xml the xml prolog does not have a closing tag so here if you see this is a xml prolog here you are not writing anything like this no not required so your xml prolog statement is not having a closing tag remember this and this is not an error this is not a part of your xml document xml tags are also case sensitive suppose if you are writing a note like this then your closing tag should be note only if you are writing note like this if you are writing your closing tag like this this is wrong because xml tags are case sensitive whatever case you are giving if it is a lower case use lower case if you are giving upper case use upper case only so all the xml tags are case sensitive the tag letter is different from this because so here it is given upper case this is lower case so both are different so opening and closing tags must be written with the same case okay so this is how we are doing you are given message and here if you are doing this is wrong because you have given upper case in the starting tag and this is correct why you have given us all lower all lower case that is also fine okay opening and closing tags are nothing but starting and ending tags okay xml elements must be properly nested properly nested means if you have given two tag some abc value and where you have to close your two tag if you are closing two tag after your note what happens there is no nesting okay so here if you are giving two then close the two tag immediately before your note so this will be right okay so if you might see improperly nested element so b is given i is given bold and italic but here what you are closing first bold you are closing so this is how you should not do so bold is started so bold has to be ended at the last so here it should not be given this is properly nesting the elements in xml all elements must be properly nested within each other so th this is how we should not do this is how we have to write it okay xml attribute values must be quoted you know what is an attribute by now so what is an attribute suppose if i am giving author author an element say author language english suppose if i am giving like this i have closed the author tag and i am giving some author name here okay so what happens here this is the element 
This is the attribute language of the element author and eng is nothing but the value. What is the value? Eng is the value. How you are giving value should be in the quotations. So, XML elements can have attributes in name value pairs and uh, they must be quoted. Okay. So, here if you see, we have given date and the value. Value is not quoted here. So, this is wrong. The value has to be quoted like this. Okay. Now, entity references. What is an entity reference or escape sequence we call? Entity reference is nothing but is the characters. There are some characters which are having a special meaning. So, if you place a character like less than inside an XML element, um, it will generate an error. Why? The parser interprets it as a starting of a new element. Of course, for every tag we are giving the angular brackets. Okay. Suppose if I wanted to give uh, 10 less than 20 expression, then in XML, by seeing this less than, it will think that it is a starting tag and it will give you an error. So, such things can be avoided by using these entity references. What is an entity reference? Suppose if I wanted to give less than, then I need to give 10, 10 ampersand LT semicolon ampersand lt semicolon than 20. So, here what is the escape sequence or uh, entity reference? This is the entity reference. So, ampersand lt semicolon is used for less than, ampersand gt semicolon is used for greater than, ampersand amp semicolon is used for ampersand, ampersand apos semicolon is used for apostrophe, ampersand quot semicolon is used for quote quotation mark. So, this is how we use escape sequences to avoid giving this ambiguity to the XML parser. How do you write a comments in XML? So, in XML, we can write uh, comments which are similar to your HTML. So, exclamatory double hyphen comments close hyphen hyphen closing a tag. So, two dashes in the mid of the comment are not allowed. Okay, you have to give it the starting and ending. This is not correct. Okay, so white space is preserved in XML. XML does not truncate multiple white spaces. Okay, suppose if you are giving the multiple white spaces too. So, what happens here? XML does not truncate multiple white spaces. So, in XML, if you are giving hello, this space is stored, it will print as is. Suppose if you are doing the same in XML, your hello door will be printed. XML stores the new line as LF. Okay, this is the carriage written that you use in the XML. Okay. Then, well formed XML. What is well formed XML? If you are following all the naming rules, Okay, whatever you are starting your angular bracket, you have to close it. For every starting tag, you just have to close, close it. Okay, and wherever you are starting, you have to close it in the hierarchy. Suppose if you are starting to here, close it then in there here. If you are starting here, okay, please don't close it at the end. So, this is how the naming rules we already discussed. If you are following these naming rules, then you will say that your XML is a well formed. To confirm to the syntax rules above are said to be well formed. In the session, we have discussed what are the XML elements, what are the XML attributes, how to define the values and also what is the naming rules and how to write the comments. So in this session, we have discussed about all this. In the next session, I am going to give you a few examples on this and also discuss how, def how to define the attribute and the values elaboratively. Thank you all.